Hi. Happy, happy Juneteenth. And, and welcome to Tiffany Talks. And this is your host, Tiffany S. Carter. And guess what? I have a show lined up for you. But before we get started, I need your participation. I need you to go on and um, hit that like button and follow button. And also, also notifications for future shows where, guess what? You can absolutely be a part of this conversation. And let me let you know, these are my opinions, my guest opinions. So, hey, if you don't agree, that's okay. We're not always for everybody. But guess what? Everyone can have a real conversation. So, I have someone very, uh, very special for you tonight. And guess what? It's not only Juneteenth, but we're going to celebrate by bringing this. This guest is a special guest. Our guest has joined us. He is the president of the Alabama Black Chamber of Commerce and a permanent figure in the world of business and entrepreneurship. On this episode, we will be discussing the importance of entrepreneurship in the black community and the role of the Alabama Black Chamber in supporting and empowering black business owners. We'll also be talking about the challenges faced by black entrepreneurs and the strategies that can be used to overcome them. Jerry has a wealth of knowledge and experience in this field, and I'm thrilled to have him on this show. And tonight, it's Empowering Black Business Owners, a conversation with Mr. Mitchell himself. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Mitchell. Hey, how are hey, you? Hey, Jerry. Hey, <laughs> happy Juneteenth. I'm we, fine. Yeah, we're going to- Happy we're gonna, Juneteenth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change we my gonna name work. to a day only. I'm going to be Juneteenth Jerry. How about that? All right, Mr. June, Team Jerry. Well, you're definitely doing some phenomenal things in the community that not only because we know we have so, so far to go in our community. And I'm glad that you're a part of that help and stepping stone to help black entrepreneurs. So, you know, because I'm just going to say this, you know, so just give us a little background because it's not going to be boring. We're not going to have them boring interviews. We want to have a conversation. So just give us a little background of who you are and where you're from. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to get my, I'm going to try to get my, my vibe back going, you know, Tiffany, you know, we talked about the music. I asked for diggable planets, you know, but <laughs> you gave, you, you gave me that kind of, I don't, I'm not sure what that was. A little, little bit of funeral, <laughs> funeral, funeral music. Oh, so you, you still oh boy. I'm trying to rechannel Kim. Kendrick Lamar and whatnot and get it back. But yeah, but okay, anyway, get um, it back. We, we've been doing this for a while now. Uh, and it comes from, it, it really comes from some of my own personal experiences of when I started out as an entrepreneur and my family um, growing up, I'd always seen, I, I saw people on my family have jobs and I saw people um, have businesses and I just noticed kind of a difference in the people that that own the businesses and and, and not saying that uh, my family members weren't passionate, the ones that have jobs, but the ones that have businesses, it allowed them to do different things beyond just something for themselves. So, you know, years ago, Dr. King talked about power being the ability to shape your own destiny. And so for me, um, Entrepreneurship is is the ultimate power because it, it allows you to shape your destiny, 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 but also uh, influence the destiny of others. So I think it's the ultimate thing. So, so we got into after watching uh, my my family members do different businesses. I actually started a business at the age of ten. I started a business at the age of ten, and uh, I'm on a. <laughs> Uh, I started a business at the age of, that was my son. He was bringing me some food. Sorry about that. I was, I was about to say, it was your studio or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know yeah. Was I just, didn't realize I was on, on here. But uh, but at the age of 10, I started a business at the age of 10. I was a, a newspaper boy. So I started learning about business then and, and had about 70 customers. Uh, and then during the summers, I, I I I had a desire to make more money, so I 
cultivated some of my newspaper customers as a uh, lawn service cu- customers. So I would cut grass for about mm, five or six of my customers during the summer. So I, you know, in the neighborhood where most of most of the kids didn't have money, I always had money. Uh, and so from there, uh, I worked in a couple of family businesses, uh, went to college. I DJed in college on the side to make a little money uh, and then went into the military. But while I was in the military, a lot of people thought I was going to stay, but I always felt like, mm, nah, I'm not going to probably stay. I need to do my own business thing um, because that that is the way I felt like I could fully express myself and doing all the things I kind of wanted to do about constraints. Uh, not And I didn't have to wait for somebody to tell me, OK, here's some work for you to do. I can I can create my own work, create the things I want to do. And so um, I started. I worked for a company and I, I started the side business about three years after I was working for this company because it was like, nah, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm going to really stay with this company. I know I want to do my own thing. Wasn't sure what I want to do. So I launched into, I got into government contracting and I quit my job. And the first, first year we did pretty decent just coming out of the gate. I think we made around $250,000. And then the next year we had a chance to, we had a chance to uh, uh, have a million dollar, multi million dollar contract with a Fortune 500 company. And we were actually creating software because we did custom software development. And unfortunately, one of the things you learn in business, particularly if you're going to have a partner, you have to pick the right partner uh, because it's mm-hmm. like it's like being married, really, when you have a business partner. It's like you're married to this person. So before you go there, <laughs> Before you go there, because you're moving along with my interview, because you 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 dropping some gems, you have to have the right partner. We're going to get to that advice. We're going to get to that advice. So okay. first and foremost, let me just give a couple of my personal things uh, from Jerry's side point. I've been connected with him since 2016. So that's like seven years ago. I was 33 years old. And I've always got if you if you're not listening to these nuggets, you want to hear from veteran entrepreneurs because in a, a society where everybody is an entrepreneur, some people are the title, but others are the responsibility. There's mm-hmm. a responsibility that we not only have to our business, but we also have a responsibility to our community to enlighten them, to give them knowledge, to feed them with they need to be fed. But one, one thing that I know that I live on you know, you teach somebody how to fish, they're going to eat for a long time. Giving fish, that should be over. You should be lending a hand to, for everybody to step up. But this comes to my next question. Who do you think inspired you the most on this journey? Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, you can get distracted, unencouraged real quick. But it's those people. I don't, I don't think about those people anymore. I think about the people that inspire me to keep going mm-hmm. because if they could do it. So who was your person that you're like, like and if it could be a few people who inspired yeah. you to keep yeah, going. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know if it was one person. Uh, I would say that the ultimate person is, is probably my mom <laughs> because I would have these conversations with my mom and my mom, I would tell, I would complain about stuff and I would say, well, you know, this isn't fair and so forth and she's and she would always tell me well what is fair tell me what fair is because good because you know her point was anything that's going on in life you're gonna have ups and downs things are not gonna be fair so you know don't worry about it being fair or not just go ahead and kind of handle your business so so that's kind of how i've operated uh i don't i don't i don't go in looking for things to be fair and level for everybody Uh, i never look for that i go and expect that i'm gonna have to do what i gotta do and then deal with things as they deal with things that come and then so over the years i've talked to a number of guys uh some family members and some non-family members who are very successful in business uh you know people that are making millions of dollars and then folks that were not making a lot like my my grandmother's brother uh my great uncle, he talked to me and he told me how he started a business in Georgia uh, and they wouldn't give him a business license back in the day. And I said, well, 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 Uncle Buster, how'd you, how'd you get in business? You've been in business, you're fixed in the community. How'd you get him? 
he said, oh, you know, he was somewhat fair skinned. He said, well, you know, I kind of slicked my hair down. I was looking kind of wavy. And I went in and told the folks I was Italian and they gave me a license. So, you know, when you hear stories like that, you know that if you got a, a will to do something, you don't really let anything stop you. Uh, you don't really uh, worry about anything being fair. I mean, because I hear a lot of folks in the community talking about, well, stuff is not fair. We see all these people getting this or getting that. Well, you can't really worry about that. you got to research and prepare and go out and do what you need to do, uh, irregardless of, of the situation. you got to be able to kind of read the situation and respond appropriately and move on. Absolutely. Great answer. And you said some key points there. You have to prepare. I don't care if you're not there first, but if you keep preparing to win the race, what happens eventually, Jerry? You win. You win. It's not about who gets there the fastest. It's about who's the most consistent and persistent. So this comes to Another question that I have, you know, um, you've been serving on as the president and CEO of the Alabama Black Chamber of Commerce since 2008. Can you tell us about the impact that it's had on the community? Yeah, well, when we started, um, the Alabama State Black Chamber comes from us having a local chamber in um, in the Huntsville area. And it, at that time, it was called, it, it started off being the Huntsville uh, Black Chamber, then some people were concerned about the name. You know how we have these hangups with our name. So we call it the, the North Alabama African American Chamber initially. But but what happened, we became part of a larger national organization. And they said, hey, the, in order to be more effective, uh, you need to create a statewide organization. And I resisted that for about three years. And then finally, I said, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this thing because we would get calls from all over the state of Alabama up to Huntsville about hey, can you help us? And I would always try to refer people to local service providers like your small business development centers and SCORE and those kind of things. And folks would always say, um, yeah, we tried all of them. Can you can you come and see if you can help us? So we decided that to be uh, more effective, we need to create a statewide organization so we could kind of duplicate some of the things that we have. So I would say, you know, yeah, we, we, we've assisted people uh, in getting... Uh, uh, financing for their business. Uh, we've counseled literally, literally thousands of people and still continue to do so today around the state. But I think what I see is the biggest thing for me is we we're able to connect people, you know, black business owners to other black business owners around the state. And, and so if you're a small guy, I can connect you to somebody like a, a Nolanda Hatcher, who runs a Studio 2H Design in Birmingham, one of the top architectural firms. And you can see um, uh, what she's doing and maybe glean some things. So so that to me is a big thing, because a lot of times uh, we don't you know, you don't know what you don't know. And you kind of if you can see some other examples, which I think is a big thing in our, our community because not only doing Black History Month, we cover a lot of people, places, dates, and things like that. We don't really talk about all the great business people um, that have gone on and some of the things they've done. I mean, you you had in the 1890s, um, uh, Black Farmer, Black Farms, uh, it was a family in, I forget the county, one of, I think Marbury County, one of the counties down in that area, they were making over a hundred grand a year on their farm, right? And this is in the 1890s. So that's equivalent to about well over three million dollars in today's dollars. So they're among some of the richest people in the state of Alabama. Or we don't really talk about the penny savings bank that was created in 19 in 1910 and, and at its height it had over um um ten thousand depositors and a thousand of which own their own homes and um the Penny Savings Bank of Alabama was one of the largest, most influential black banks in the in the nation itself. So so this is a lot of things that we don't know. Um, I, I like to share information um, and try to point folks in different directions or try to connect um, people to folks like yourself who have knowledge and knowledge in different subject matter areas, which I think that's a good thing. And people um, are always looking for something, but then sometimes we don't always follow through uh for, for various reasons even in 
even though we think maybe it's going to be difficult or whatnot. And so that's one of the reasons I really enjoy working with younger people. I, I enjoy working with our college students and our high school students because they're not, for lack of a better word, jaded by uh, disappointments and maybe failures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Absolutely. if something that worked for them, they jump, they, they move on to the next thing. And they're very creative. Whereas, you know, sometimes as we get older and things don't work out, we feel a little defeated and we don't know if we can do it. And doubt creeps in and it 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 stops us from maybe in some ways being all that we can be as entrepreneurs. So definitely you answered a lot of questions in this first um, segment of this. And trust me, I have a couple few more questions and you kind of already wrapped up the questions, but I'm going to elaborate. Like even when you say on the, ne um, th the next part of this, after we get a word from our sponsors, um, you know, we're going to talk about um, how the Black Chamber has scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, when you join the chamber, how, how much information is at your fingertips with your registration and your membership? Mm -hmm that people don't know about because I'm I'm a witness that you don't have to know everything. You have to just keep showing up with other people who know more than you and become yep. a student every single day. I'm not yeah. a teacher every day, but I'm a student every day and I will soak up the information and use what I need to use to keep going. And he's absolutely right. You know, I was in the room when I didn't have as much going on, but I wanted to be there. And the, the more you keep stepping into these rooms where you want more, you will absolutely get more. So hold that thought. Let's take a break. Get some water, even some juice or whatever. You know, it's at eight. We ain't going to say what else, but <laughs> get your beverage and come back to this second part. We'll be right back as, as you hear a word from our partners. My name is Tiffany S. Carter. I'm the host of Tiffany Talk. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but I'm sitting here in Kissimmee, Florida with Westgate Resort. Because guess what? I'm their partner. I am so grateful that I partner up with Westgate. We're the gift that keeps on giving. You know where to get the free stuff. You know where to get the vacation. Share your time with Westgate, where we love to go on vacation. I don't work for cars, homes, or any of those things. I work for vacation. Come and join Tiffany Talks. But here at Westgate Resort, we welcome you where all the fun is happening and you're invited. Let's vacation together. Click the link below. Now you saw some of our sponsors. We have Westgate Resort, who's able to give you what you want for this summer. Hey, won't you hit me up in my link and say, Tiffany, how can I get a free vacation? I'm here to tell you, because guess what? Thank you, Westgate Resort, that you thought enough of my audience to give me a couple of those tickets so you can go on a free vacation. I know you need it, right? Then we have, if your house need clean, your office need clean, we have a cleaning advantage for you. And they're going to say, we're going to get you right and tight the right way. Then if you have trees that's coming down, because honey, there's some storms coming, you better go to Washington Tree Service because they will do you right in time. And then no job is too big and no job is dirty. Let us do you right. Then if you saw, we have Mr. Jerry Mitchell. He's on a wealth tour. He, we, he's going to get our credit straight. 
financial services and all the above. And he is linked to partners that are able and experts that are able to help you in the areas that you need. And he's coming to a city near you through Alabama and hopefully over the United States. But that, that he didn't say that, but hopefully. But also, we just wrapped up this Innovators and Entrepreneur Conference. And honey, if you have not tapped into the Black Chamber of Commerce of Alabama, um, any Black Chamber, you need to tap in because it gave a wealth of knowledge of things that I can use, you can use, we all can use. We love information we can use. Let's be resourceful, okay? So without further ado, let's go on and just talk to Mr. Jerry and end this little part two. And I'm glad you came to join me. Don't forget to subscribe, share, follow, interact. If you want to be a guest on Tiffany Talks, if you want to air advertise, please contact me, the link in the bio. But without further ado, we like tonight, we have Mr. Jerry Mitchell, who is the CEO and president of the Chamber of Commerce. And he is just giving us some gems tonight. And I'm so excited to have him here. Welcome him back to the stage. Hi, Jerry. I, I'm feeling much better now. I, I, I like the music upgrade. I heard that thing. It said, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> like, yeah, now, Here now. we go. We, Here we, got, we go. We got, yeah. we, got, we, got, we got rid of the funeral music. Okay, yeah. You know what? <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after this. But anyway, okay. okay. before we went on break, Mr. Mitchell was talking about um, his um, contributions to the students, which is big. You know, um, when, when I, we was at the conference, uh, one of the speakers was saying how, you know, your current age, even the age I am, we're, we're only for the next 20, 30 years, but our children are the next 60 to 50 years. And that kind of mm -hmm. rang with me. That was something that was like, you know, we need to get serious about the discipline of it all, because it's one thing to own a business, but it's another thing to acquire the discipline. A lot of people don't acquire the discipline. So, number one, tell us about the wealth tour and what's been going on there. Oh, oh, sure. Great. Uh, we started the wealth, wealth Tour actually in 2022. And the Wealth Tour came about because um, we were running to a lot of our members and a lot of our businesses because a lot of business we help. Um, they're not even members of the chamber itself. Um, but we would talk to them and, and, and they would have issues with their credit that would prevent them from getting some of the financial resources that they may have wanted or at the level. And then another thing we noticed that a lot of our guys had not prepared for the future, meaning uh, they had not used their their entrepreneurial activity as a tool for wealth creation for themselves, their families, future generations, and their employees as well. So, so one of talking to one of our members, and and that's that's one thing I love about members so great. They're so talented. Uh, talk to uh, a friend of mine, uh, Maurice Scott. Uh, and you may know Maurice Scott from appearing on uh, the show, the Oprah Network show, um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. But in his real life, he's a great business owner, um, owns multiple mm -hmm. businesses and has uh, Credit One USA. And uh, they're in four states providing uh, credit enhancement services to individuals and business owners. And he's worked with a lot of business owners to uh, improve their profile so they could uh, get some of the financial resources they have. And then uh, on our wealth side, we have Mr. Antonio Sankey, who many of you probably don't know him. He's a very low key guy. Uh, he owns uh, ABS Wealth Management based in Hoover, Alabama. And he is a, a certified multimillionaire guy. I, I know this for a fact. He's a multimillionaire. And uh, he, um, he manages you said uh, certified for it, certified. Certified, certified. <laughs> yeah, so, he, so he manages, he manages, the he check. manages, a, he manages a $250 million portfolio of other people's money. So he has NFL players, NBA players, and the like, as well as everyday citizen. One of the things I enjoy about him, he has something for everybody. He shared a story uh, with us when he first started uh, of how he worked with this lady she was living in a community and, and you know, when we're going on it in, in recession and a lot of people were, homes were being foreclosed, she came to him mm -hmm. and said, you know, I'm really concerned about, I'm really concerned about um, uh, who my neighbors will be because all these, these houses are being foreclosed and, you know, we're going to have 
different people coming into the neighborhood and the neighborhood dynamics don't change. So he says, okay, well, if you want to do something about it, why don't you buy the houses? And she's like, what? So he helped her develop a plan to uh, buy homes in her neighborhood when she was 68. And at the age of 77, she was a multimillionaire. And, and she's so proud of the fact that she controls who comes in her neighborhood, which is really cool. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. yeah, if you can do that, making sure you got good neighbors and, and folks are not just coming in trying to be renters or different things of that nature and messing up the property value. So, so, you know, so we have things like that. So we, so last year we went to six cities. We went to, uh, we came to Huntsville. We were over in Florence. We were, we were down in Mobile. We were over in Dothan, Alabama. Um, so this year we're going to, uh, eight different cities uh, so far. Let's see where we've gone this year. We've only gone to, yeah, we've gone to, oh yeah, we've gone to two cities. We've gone to Mobile again, and we've gone to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And so I think next month we'll be going to Enterprise, Alabama. So we'll we'll probably touch someplace where any of you are that's close by uh, if you want to attend. And there's no cost to attend. Uh, our, all our events are sponsored, which is another great part of being active with the chamber. You get a lot of free stuff that you don't even think about. Uh, so you can come to those. Uh, and another thing that we did, I just want to mention, you didn't mention this, Tiffany, we have our QuickBooks tour. With our QuickBooks tour, QuickBooks came about as a result of, of the things that we saw during the pandemic, where uh, certain folk got PPP money and other folks didn't. And we noticed that a lot of our guys did not get PPP money. And, you know, of course, all our guys that were probably making a half a million dollars to several million dollars and up in their businesses, they got the call before the PPP money came out. But, but you know, the average uh, black owned business is, is not making that kind of money on average in the state of Alabama. So, so they didn't get the call. So a lot of those guys were denied. So one of the reasons that we learned they were denied and, and doing our research is because of lack of financial statements and those kind of things. So we, so we got we we're able to secure some funding to launch this QuickBooks tour. So we've been to about 10 different cities uh, giving people a QuickBooks orientation. And then if they attend the two nights, we we purchase them a one one year subscription to QuickBooks. It doesn't cost them anything but time. All they have to do is show up, basically, and they can get this software. So we believe that's going to help uh, uh, because one thing you're going to learn in QuickBooks at a very base level you're going to learn how to generate a financial statement. You'll better do that yourself. So those are just okay, some. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you already heard him say a boatload of things you need in business. And you need a strong support. You don't need a lot of people, but you need a support system and mentorship. Right. I always ask the business owner, I don't care if they're a millionaire. I'm like, do you have mentors? And if yeah. they say no, that means they're they're not getting new information. That's all mm-hmm. that signifies. You're not getting new information. You're sticking with the information that you think you know, and nobody knows everything. But for the last couple of questions, I did want to highlight that you've helped over a thousand businesses to get yes, up actually, and running. Actually, more and than, yeah. Yeah. More than yeah. that. It's yeah. over. You know what I'm saying? When you Jerry, oh, like I my try. mentor. So you know what? He's coming over I here mentoring. Me. Yeah. I try not so to anyways. <laughs> anyways, he, he oh, yeah. this yeah. is this 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 guy, don't don't let him fool you. He he he's comical, but he's very serious in business when it's time. And I can appreciate the humor, but I also can appreciate the desire to want to help others. And like I said, he just told you about the wealth tour. He told you about the QuickBooks tour. We just had a conference. Then he also gave away scholarships doing black history, a great phenomenal black history program that we had at mm-hmm. Alabama A&M that I was able to attend um, Christmas parties, so many things, but more than all of that, cause we can give you all the information how do people become a part of this movement of the Black Chamber? Because I'm going to let you know, and I'm going to say this on record, I have never learned more at another chamber than I have at the Black Chamber. Tell it. Tell it. <laughs> and like, I just haven't. <laughs> I've, I've heard a lot of things, but actually leading you to the water where to drink, 
It's like throwing out rope with nothing to catch it and anchor it. So I know he's invested and not, and it's just not for black people or it's for everybody. If you come to the chamber meeting, which one is tomorrow in Huntsville, Alabama, if you come to the chamber meeting, you will understand that it's everybody in the room. It's not just African-Americans, it's everybody. They're welcome and they're coming and bringing information, being presenters. And it's a wealth of knowledge that you could be missing out on. You are missing out on it if you're a business owner and you in Alabama, Tuscaloosa, Montgomery, Birmingham, Mobile, you are missing out on it. So tell us how we all can get involved and tap in. Yes. Uh, well, you can you can go to our website, which is which is www.alblackcc.org. So it's AL, short for Alabama black like the color uh cc charlie charlie.org so it's www.alblackcc.org or you can email us at info i n say it again say it again one more second so we can go www www.alblackcc.org uh and that will show you information on us but also will link you to our affiliate chambers around the state wherever you are um, and then uh, you can also email us at info at alblackcc.org, or you can give us a call at uh, 205-895-1157, and we'll be happy to help you any way we can. And if we can't help you, we're going to connect you to somebody that, that can. Um, so um, we, you know, I, I like to view us as, as, we're a, we're a help support organization. We don't we don't run around really. We don't, really don't do a lot of advertising, uh, Tiffany. I, I tell people I was talking to a young lady, and I said I like to think our organization we're like the equalizer. You know what the equalizers say? You know those who need me know where to find me. So that's how we that's how we feel that you know if somebody really needs us, uh, they'll they'll find us. And normally what we see is. Um, entrepreneurs that have gone to several other organizations and did not necessarily get fed mm -hmm. all the stuff they, they need. So, um, so that's a, that's a big thing. And we learn stuff all the time. We never stop learning. Uh, just like I tell people that are just starting in business, you know, we tell them, Hey, you need a reading program. Well, I have a reading program and, and I'm not just talking about books. I read different articles. Um, uh, I listen to, um, videos and i'm always trying to learn um and and then you you know you have to create a network you have to create a network of people that kind of know you and have learned stuff about you and you do that through participating in various uh organizations you know nonprofits giving back to the community so you know when when maybe it might be a time that you need support well the, the people most likely to help you are the people that kind of have some familiarity with you that's just that's just kind of like a human nature thing um and so um you know you want to create your own kitchen cabinet so like you were saying about mentors you know i have a bunch of people that i bounce things off that i'll i'll sit with and and we'll we'll chop it up information and you know sometimes we talk for hours you know over food we're just talking about different things that are going on and, and what we're seeing um and so um and then you want to know where you are financially. So you always got to know uh, kind of what your what your what your place in the financial world is. So you want to have a, as Maurice Scott likes to talk about, having a personal financial statement. So you kind of know at any point if you do need some finance. Okay, where do I stand personally? Mm -hmm. um, and so those are just you know some 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 basic things because. You know, I, I love being an entrepreneur. I love entrepreneurship. I love meeting all the people that come up with all these ideas. And I every month I meet somebody that has a different kind of idea. Now, most most ideas are fairly similar, but every now and then you you, you meet somebody that they have something that you never heard of. And I, I I remember in 2008 I had a student. I was I, was, I had my students writing a business plan, uh, and this young lady wrote a a, a business plan for. A, beauty pageant consulting business and i was i was messing around because i kind of am a, uh, am a jokester as you know and i said well hey miss jones you got this beauty pageant consulting business uh what are you going to teach people to do 
do the Miss America wave. And I was doing like that. And la and the young lady, rightfully so, she got mad at me and said, well, Mr. Mitchell, I want you to know, and this is in 2008, that the beauty pageant industry is a $5 billion industry. I was like, what? <laughs> so I had to go back that night and research that. And I said, oh, my student knows what she's talking about. So the next, next class meeting, I said, hey, Ms. Jones, I apologize. I see your business plan. I see your vision. And if you want to go ahead full full force with this thing, I will be an investor in your company personally because I believe in what you're doing. And so the young lady, she had generated um, $40,000 doing her business part time. And that's how she paid her school fees at the university, which I thought was really cool. Really cool. But uh, but, you know, um, right. she. She decided to go to corporate America instead. But I said, well, if you ever decide to do this business thing, make sure I'm the first person you call because I'm going to invest in it. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm just, you know, I like meeting people like that and, you know, that come with different things and uh, um, that may be a little different that people may laugh at people like me because we don't know. So we have to do some homework. So uh, I don't, I don't doubt anything anybody tells me but we just want to help you to do the research to see if it makes business sense because you don't want to do something that's gonna lose money if it's not gonna make money then eh, you know you probably should make do a nonprofit. really if you're not really about <laughs> having something that that's generating money and can create wealth then you know and i meet people that want to help people so they want to help people and i said well you know if your business makes money, uh, you can help all the people you, you want. I said, look at Bill Gates. He writes off all kind of stuff. Look at uh, Jeff Bezos. They write off all kind of things because they have the money to do it through their businesses. So, but if you, you know, a lot of times people just solely focus on helping the community. So we work with a lot of nonprofits as well. We've created, helped create a bunch of nonprofits that serve different aspects in the community. So we're proud of that as well. Yep, and that's an awesome thing. And he's telling the truth. Uh, when you become a member of the Chamber of Commerce, Black Chamber of Commerce, they will help you with your 5013 C's, mm -hmm. they will help you with government contract and point you in the right direction, they will help you with business plans. So you can say $29.99 and you can just join this Chamber of Commerce and get everything at one stop shop. How do you like that? So yes. this is. <laughs> This Thank is leading you. me. Yes, I'm just saying it is a one because I didn't even know until every time. This is how I approach Jerry. Well, I need this. You know what I'm saying? Because I look at him as a dad in business. Like he just has it. He has a science. He has a theory. He has a way. And then he advertised like I like to advertise. I don't like to tell people all the time what I do. I just like to show what I do. And you come and ask me. I don't give unsolicited advice, especially when you get paid for it. You don't do, you just stop giving unsolicited advice. If people think you can do something, they need to see that you're doing it and you need to be doing it consistently. So you won't have to sell. And that's what I think about Jerry. That's why I want to thank him for taking the time out. We have several conversations, but this conversation is on record for the whole world to see about what type of knowledge. This guy is a book of knowledge. He's been a teacher, veteran. Thank you for your service, by the way. And he's doing something so phenomenal in Alabama that I'm actually proud of because I'm not trying to be funny, but it has been in entrepreneurship very difficult. So I needed someone to hold my hand because I came from a city of Atlanta where black entrepreneurship is it. Where you had to fight for it in another area. And I didn't know how to fight for it. And I just learned how to fight for it over this decade. But I'm glad I'm connected to great people that's showing me the fight can happen. And you can be a part of that in a positive and make a positive impact. So I thank you so much. If, can you give some last closing words? Because you have just been a part of this conversation, Mr. Mitchell, about time. And that's on me. <laughs> you, <laughs> well, so. well, 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 let me say, let me encourage everybody to, to, um, learn the history of black folks in business, right? Because I do this presentation about how to grow black business and, and it's really nothing new. Uh, everything I talk about, I borrow, it's been, a, it's been around for 120 years. It's mm -hmm. been around for 120 years, but at the 19, at the 1898 Atlanta conference, which was a conference that was ho hosted by Booker T. Washington. 
And in this case, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois was the um, convener of the conference. He talked about things that black folks and black businesses need to do to be successful in, in the world of business. And, you know, one of the things he talked about uh, is black folks being knowledgeable, being knowledgeable of your craft, you know, having expert skills to be able to provide expert service. He also talked about being able to provide good customer service, good, honest customer service. And, you know, we always hear disparaging remarks about black businesses, unfortunately, uh, but having good customer service. And then he talked about uh, our black organizations and institutions supporting black businesses like our black churches, uh, our colleges and, and other. And so imagine if uh, at church each week, your pastor was talking about supporting black businesses. Guess what we would probably do? Guess what, who we would shop with? You know, it's just this, this basic stuff. And then he talked about uh, uh, having a savings program. So, you know, you're putting yourself as a business owner in a position for the future, um, having your finances in order and whatnot. And then he talked about uh, the black community supporting black businesses, which we are kind of sort of doing a little bit better now. Um, but we need to do more. And he talked about supporting black businesses, even if it's to your disadvantage. And that's one of the things I do. You know, I, I, I'm willing to pay 10 to 20 percent more just to shop with a black business, because particularly if you're getting items, I know that, you know, our our retail guys, they're not going to get the, the products for the same price a Walmart does, you know, because Walmart has volume but I'm going to support them because I want them to be successful. I want them to stay in our communities and, and prosper. So those are just some things, you know, if we had been doing this stuff the last 120 years, just imagine where black businesses would be now, you know, we're already doing pretty good, but we'd be like super powerful and, and we'd be way more connected, you know, in the, in our communities um, and with each other, you know, black businesses need to work with each other. And a lot of our guys do that. They go out and when they have projects, they try to get black subs. I know when I get contracts, I'm calling my chamber members to get on the project. So that's just something I'll, you know, I'll close with that. You know, these principles from W.E.B. Du Bois that he talked about more than 120 years ago. And uh, if we just could do those things um, in a robust way, just imagine where we could be. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your time. We know you busy, mm -hmm. but I thank you for gracing my platform. Well, well hey, look, I'm, I'm Juneteenth Jerry today, so I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm relaxed. relaxed. Y'all see my Juneteenth shirt? Yes, okay. Juneteenth Jerry today, so. Yeah. Don't know what happened there. Don't know. I can't see you anymore. <laughs> I know. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but we don't want to get caught up there. We definitely, you know, um, caught up in just celebrating Juneteenth. We want to make a difference and really set our people free. And the way you set your people free, because I, this is my saying, you know, they took the shackles off of our hands and feet and they put them on our minds. So open a book and read it. All right. To let you know that you're not a slave, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't be don't get all the knowledge that you can because it's free out here to get and you can get it unlimited amount. Keep growing. But thank you, Jerry, for being on Tiffany thank Talks you. and thank you for being a part of this conversation. We hope you'll be thank back you. soon with more information because we're glad to have you back here, okay? All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Now, this has been another real conversation because we want to keep the real conversations going that empower our community. Oh, it's June 19th in recognition of June 19th of our not only our liberation and celebration, but we got a long way to go before we start celebrating, folks. OK, but next week, next week. Always tune in for Tiffany Talks. Go back on the videos. There's so many awesome guests that have been blessed on this platform. If you want to be a guest, 
and me consider you it's a waiting list but if you want me to put you down on the list just let me know and if you want to advertise with tiffany talks let me know and we can get it done also if you have any anything that you think that be a good topic on tiffany talks and you want to talk about it let's talk about it now I thank you so much for joining. I thank you for our sponsors and I thank you for taking out time of your schedule on this Juneteenth 2023. And this is your girl, Tiffany S. Carter, where real conversations are continue to happen. And guess what? Jerry Mitchell was just a part of the conversation, but you also was too. Thank you and have a blessed night. I'll see you later. My name is Tiffany S. Carter. I'm the host of Tiffany Talks. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but I'm sitting here in Kissimmee, Florida with Westgate Resort. Cause guess what? I'm their partner. I am so grateful that I partner up with Westgate where the gift that keeps on giving. You know where to get the free stuff. You know where to get the vacation. Share your time with Westgate where we love to go on vacation. I don't work for cars, homes, or any of those things. I work for vacation. Come and join Tiffany Talks. But here at Westgate Resort, we welcome you where all the fun is happening and you're invited. Let's vacation together. Click the link below.